Hey guys, it's PoxyPro. Welcome back to another video. Today in Fallout 76, I'm going to be doing another quote unquote beginner's guide. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to be doing a beginner's guide, which is pretty much going to be talking about some tips and tricks that I know. I'm just going to kind of call it beginner's guide because some of these tips and tricks veteran players or higher level players might already know. But there's still also the chance that if you're a higher level player, you don't know. So I kind of classify it as both. You know, most beginners won't know this stuff, but in general, it is just tips and tricks. All right, so to get started, I want to try and get through these as quick as possible, but still deliver all of the tips and tricks that I've got for you today. The first one that I want to talk about is inventory management. So in one of the latest updates or in an update not too far ago, long ago, they introduced the new tab, which kind of helps for um, organization but what i really like to do is like imagine you have a bunch of weapons in your inventory like i do and um you want to go ahead and sort your weapons a lot easier you can actually just rename your weapons or your favorite weapons with like an asterisk or some sort of symbol and it will appear at the top uh, this works with numbers, you can sort it by alphabetical, so if you put an A at the front, or if you put uh, a star, or like an and sign, or any numbers, then it will always appear at the top. And that way, whenever I need to quickly switch weapons or look at my weapons, I can always have them at the top of the list in my inventory. This applies for armor, you know, apparel, anything that you can rename that you want to easily sort. For my next tip, atomic shop items uh, such as skins for weapons actually help with your legendary scripting. So I have a couple or several weapons that are um, legendary and have a atomic shop skin on them and you can see that they actually don't appear in this menu. And I have a bunch of legendaries on me so right now it would be sorted at the top so that kind of goes back with to my last tip. Your favorite items will still be at the top when it's sorted in here as well. And so you can see like previously I had a lot more guns that were at the top of the sort list, but these are the only ones that are unskinned. And then uh, yeah, I'm able to script them still. So if you're like spam scripting or if you're not careful, you might accidentally script a weapon that you actually like. Um, but in this case, like if I go to my favorites, like this one didn't appear and this is just because it has a atomic shop skin on it. So sorting them with the renaming and having an atomic shop skin will hopefully make it so that you never accidentally script a weapon that you actually like. All right, and for this next tip, it is gonna be regarding camp building and doors. Uh, if you have atomic shop item doors or a door that you really wanna place but doesn't fit with a specific like socket, or I guess like door frame, uh, well, this is how you get around it. So for example, this is my bunker and I am currently using the bunker door, uh, which was what's normally supposed to go with it. Or maybe I think I'm actually using no door. So I'll go ahead and show you guys right here. So if I go over to doors and I place, well, first you wanna go ahead and place the correct door that is compatible with the door frame. So in this case, it would be the bunker one. Right there so let's say I place the bunker one and then I go ahead and exit the menu so this is gonna fit and work properly um, but let's say I want to change the visual aesthetic of this then I can go ahead and enter the edit menu go up to it and click uh, or hit the button that is store scrap or replace that right there at the bottom for me it's R so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then you're not gonna scrap you're not gonna store but you're actually gonna replace so for me, it's T, and once I replace, it'll let you go through all of the doors in the category, in the same category. So technically, these doors aren't supposed to be able to be placed in the bunker frame. Like if you try placing one of these doors normally, it's not going to work. But in this case, uh, you can actually just swap it out to something. And like, let's say I just want to go ahead and put on the BOS door. And I can exit and now I have a bunker with the BOS door in front of it and it will still open and close. It's just the animation might look a little bit weird but it'll still function correctly as you can see right here. So my next tip is going to be regarding the specials. Um, I don't know if you guys know but these specials do influence like how many prick cards you can use but 
they also give you i guess like hidden stats in a way the game doesn't really directly tell you but like for example strength says that it measures your raw physical power and it affects how much you can carry and the damage of all melee attacks and not everybody kind of like reads through this screen um, but if you're ever curious about the exact amounts uh, i'll go ahead and tell you now so for every point in strength you get plus five to your carry weight you get plus five percent melee damage regardless if it's one-handed or two-handed melee damage, and then it's plus 10% unarmed melee damage. And so every point of strength is going to be adding to that. So yeah, and like right now I have 19 strength. So for an example, that would give me extra 95 carry weight just from my strength alone. Uh, next we have the perception tree, which affects your awareness, uh, ability to detect stealthy movements, and your weapon accuracy in VATS. But the actual stats is... This one doesn't really have like an actual statistical change. Uh, it pretty much just improves your VATS capabilities. Um, so using VATS is a lot easier when you have higher perception. Endurance is a measure of your overall physical fitness. It affects your total health, your action point drain from sprinting, and your resistances to disease. And so for endurance, it also doesn't have any like recorded exact stat, but to be more specific, you get um, less AP drain when you're sprinting. I believe you also get more maximum HP and you have a higher resistance to diseases. So like you have a less chance of getting affected by a disease when coming into contact with one. With Charisma, Charisma is your ability to lead and help others. It allows you to share higher point perks and also affects your rewards from group quests and prices when you barter. So having a high Charisma allows you to actually share perk cards with your public team or with your team in general. You also get better prices when you're bartering with a NPC vendor and you get 5% XP from events and 5% caps from events. And this is like extra XP and extra caps. And um, this is all per Charisma as well. Like so pretty much every single time you up or put a point into one of these categories, it's gonna improve by like these percentages or just in, in general. With intelligence, um, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of skip reading the description just to make this quicker. With intelligence, uh, you get fewer hacking choices. So like when you're hacking a terminal, it'll be a lot easier to uh, pick the correct one. The condition of crafted equipment is gonna be higher and you get 2% XP bonus per uh, point of int. Agility is a measure of your overall fitness and reflexes, and this one affects your action points and your ability to sneak. And this, I guess it mainly affects the action points in VATS, and then your actual like detection level or how well you can sneak. Luck will affect the recharge rate of your critical hits when you're using VATS, and the condition and durability of items you loot will generally be higher. So that's gonna be all of the special breakdowns. And I'll go ahead and actually show you guys how you can share perk cards when you're on a team. So right now on my uh, name, you can see that I have like a one in the casual team and that's because I'm sharing a perk card. So if you go to your perk card menu and you go over to the charisma tree and you can share any type of perk card, it doesn't matter like what type it is. It just depends on like how valuable the, uh, the perk, like how much the perk is worth. So right here on the bottom, you can see the option share. And let's say I try to share a three point perk. It's gonna tell me that I need at least three points of charisma for each perk point of the card to be shared. So in this case, I would need three times three, which is nine, and I only have six charisma. Uh, so I would only be able to share like maybe Grenader, which would be three times two, which is six, so I could share Grenader. Um, but I personally like to share, uh, share Strange in numbers because most people are mutated, so I feel like they can take effect from this. So that's what I share. All right, for this next tip or trick, we're gonna head to the Wayward, which is gonna be right here on the map, right under Vault 76, pretty close to the Overseer's camp. And uh, I'm kind of, surprised that the game never tells you this but after you complete the one wastelander story there's actually an npc in here named smiley that you can buy gold bullion from and it's only going to cost uh caps and you can decide on how much caps you want to commit for how many bullion you want in return and you can do this only once a week and i believe fallout 76 weeks reset on tuesdays because that's when the atomic shop weekly update comes out and so we can talk to smiley here and smiley is just on the second story of the wayward right up in this room and you can talk to the smiley and i guess i already bought it this week so i can't show you guys but essentially once you talk to him there will be a dialogue option where he's offering gold and you can accept it and then i'll give you a bunch of different tiers 
The max amount you can buy per week is 300 gold bullion, and this is going to cost you 6,000 caps, and then it will digress from there, from each tier. Um, but yeah, a lot of people that I have come across actually didn't know that you could get bullion from Smiley, so hopefully this is helpful for your, for all of those out there who are grinding for those bullion items and gear. For the next one, I want to talk about some items that might be in your inventory that you don't even realize. Uh, a lot of times you might be encumbered and just wondering like what is weighing you down. So if you go over to the misc tab, there's a lot of items here and you would think that most of this doesn't actually weigh anything, but in reality some of this stuff actually does add up to a lot. One of them being repair kits, so like this basic repair kit is less than one pound right now, but that's at four repair kits. Um, if you've never taken repair kits out of your inventory before, uh, after like a long time of playing, this would be a much bigger stack and thus a lot more stack weight. So that's one of them. Another one is ore, so if you're harvesting a bunch of ore or if you've just come upon a bunch of ore here and there uh, this will also be hidden in your misc and it will weigh up a lot this is only 22 gold ore but it's already weighing two pounds and um, you know if you have a script box and you're putting things into it the ore doesn't go in and these this is an example of like improved repair kits this is only 35 of them but this is already weighing at four pounds and the scrap kits 15 of them is two pounds and I don't have any on me at the moment, but there's also gunpowder that can go into the misc, which would be under the G section, and gunpowder can also add up to a lot of weight. And then, and that's just the misc tab. There's also some other categories that might end up uh, adding unnecessary weight. If we were to go to the weapons tab, sometimes you can get floater grenades. <laughs> And, you know, floater grenades tend to stack up and you usually get them as like rewards for doing events and whatnot. And you'll just get like a bunch of floater grenades thrown in as and a part of that is also you can get rewarded heavy ammo. So I do recommend also always checking your ammo. And a lot of times for some reason, they'll give you like 40 millimeter grenades or missiles or uh, nukes and all of those explosive ammos weigh a lot in your inventory. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for watching your inventory weight. All right, and for the next tip or trick, I am gonna talk about using your second camp slot as a survival tent. It's like a free to play survival tent, essentially. So I have Fallout first, so this is... So this is my regular survival tent, and you know, it's pretty small and compact, and it comes with a scrap box, it has the cooking station, and the Tinker's workbench. And the benefit is that it is free to place, and it is also free to fast travel too. But honestly, that's not too different from having a regular camp. You know, whenever you're really in need or you're super encumbered somewhere out and you're not close to a stash, you could just activate your second camp and then you could um, go ahead and move it to wherever you are. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to set this up and kind of give you just a brief idea of like what you can do. So pretty much I would recommend getting a prefab or you can build like a really easy looking structure. And you wanna make sure that this structure that you build is like small and easily convenient to place, if that makes sense. So like this prefab was super easy to place. It's floating, but it can still be placed here. And that just makes it even more convenient to move it similar to a survival tent. And once you're in here, like I can kind of just show you like what you can build inside because you know it's a regular camp so you can have all sorts of things and you're not limited to what a survival tent has. So here I've got the stash, I have the perk card changer, the perk loadouts, I've got the scrap box. Um, in this case you might not have the scrap box but then you could have all the workbenches and you know you'd have access to your stash. And you even have like a bed in here and this is all just in one uh, and I will say like you can add even more or make the structure even more complex. Um, you just want to make it as easy to place as possible because you're going to be placing it on the fly if it's going to be your free to play survival tent. Um, but once you have your structure built and you're satisfied with everything that's in it, you can go ahead and go to blueprints. And this is how we're going to make it sort of like a survival tent. Uh, this is what my workshop blueprint looks like. And this is similar to what uh, we're gonna do here like it's just one platform but it has like the sash box on it a crafting bench and it says poxy pros here um, so we're gonna go ahead and make a new blueprint 
what you can go ahead and do by selecting the structure and then you want to go ahead and hold down E or whichever button it is for you and this will make a blueprint and you can see there's a blueprint budget so it has to be within the blueprint and then you can just go ahead and use the grow selection and this will try to go ahead and grab everything in here that's connected. Grow selection is pretty much the easiest way to highlight everything, but if you need to, there's other buttons to allow you to like select just the structure or individual items. And you just wanna make sure everything's in here. Um, and you can see that it is gonna have this faded white effect if it is selected. If it's not selected, it's gonna be normal looking like that. You can also judge by the budget going up and down, depending if it's in the blueprint or not. And once you have it created or once you have it all selected, you can go to hit create blueprint and we'll hit new and we can name this uh, survival. We'll say free to play sur survival 10. We'll hit accept. All right. And then let's say, oh no, I'm super encumbered. I I can't move that fast. I, I can't tra fast travel to a vendor. Like what am I gonna do, right? And you don't have the Fallout First Tent? Well, you can just go here. You can go to camp slots, toggle your second camp, which is gonna be where the survival tent is stored. And then you can move this very easily. For just 40 caps, I'm gonna go ahead and move it. And similar to the survival tent, you are gonna have to find a area that is not too close to a actual location. All right, and I just place it for 40 caps, which I think is fairly cheap if it's gonna go ahead and save you from being in a tricky situation. And now I can just go to the blueprints tab, go down to the bungalow or to uh, whatever, you know, survival tent that you guys made, and then you just place it. Well, you know, Maybe don't use this prefab if you're going to be doing this trick or tip because uh, I think it's just bugged, but <laughs> I think you guys get the point. I'll just demonstrate with this. I think maybe using regular platforms might be easier than a prefab, um, but essentially, boom, you can place it and then you'll be able to access your stash and then you like you have a workbench there and everything and then you're saved and then you can fast travel and there is a little bit of a cooldown for switching your base, but I think it's under like a minute I think like it's it's pretty negligible so you can just wait it out and if you need to go back to your camp you just reactivate your camp and then this one's gonna go away and then you can just go back to your camp and also like let's say I want to come back to this area um, because maybe I leave my camp and this is really close to the purveyor um, I could then just do the same thing go here go to the, this one and activate this camp and then I could fast travel to it for free which is pretty much like a survival tent if you were to leave it somewhere. Um, so yeah, free to play survival tent. All right, and for this next beginner tip or trick, this is kind of like a, a speed strategy. So it is really efficient, and I believe it's more efficient to just get dirty water from open water sources. So like this is just a random river below the gorge workshop. And um, if I just go up to it and I spam R, uh, I guess I'll just go ahead and demonstrate it right now. So I have 374 carry weight. And I'm just gonna spam R. I spammed like, I don't know, a bunch, like maybe 10 times. And now I have 382 weight, and if I go to my food and drink, I have 1130 water. And that was really quick. So yeah, I think this is the best way to get dirty water. I think a lot of people might get um, kind of caught up in using the water pump at your camp or your, um, or like a sink at your camp but that has an animation before it gives you the dirty water. So I would highly recommend just going to a water source location that's nearest to you and then get all the dirty water you need and then you can head back to your camp or do whatever crafting or cooking you need. It'll just save you a lot of time. All right, and for the very last tip or trick, we are gonna talk about the settings. If you go to controls, you can actually disable the power armor HUD. I don't know if you guys noticed, but during this video, I was in power armor, but I didn't have the usual power armor graphics that usually cover like a decent amount of the screen with like, and like your health bar changes and everything. I personally didn't really like it. So you can go ahead and go into your settings, controls, and then you can just scroll down a little bit and where it'll say power armor HUD and I have it off. And that way you get just like a regular uh, non-power armor HUD, which I think is better. So if that's what you prefer, you can go ahead and toggle this on or off. Um, next thing that I think is pretty important is show damage numbers for adventure. I think by default, this is off, um, but it's really helpful to like start to gauge how much damage you're doing in the game and like your DPS or when you get a crit headshot. 
Um, so I like to turn this on. I think it's a big plus and yeah, those two settings are pretty important that I think everybody sh could benefit from. And yeah, I encourage everybody to kind of like go through the settings and really see if there's anything that you want to change that might be worth changing for you. Like there's field of view here as well. And in the game settings, there is actually a pacifist mode. So if you are somebody who's only interested in the PVE aspect of this game, player versus environment, then you probably don't really care about like killing other players. Uh, I would recommend turning pacifist mode on when you're at events, like you can't accidentally shoot players and then they might accidentally shoot you and then PVP might turn on. Um, this kind of just keeps you safe from all of that. Um, and yeah, that's gonna be pretty much it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know in the comment section below. These were like about 10 uh, tips or tricks, and uh, I'll probably make another one if I can think of another like solid 10 tips or tricks that people might find helpful. If you have any positive or negative feedback, please let me know in the comment section below. But otherwise, until next time.